keep an eye out for Santilla, would you? Why are you here? What now? Not that it's any of your business, but my loyalty is and always will be with Sentius. Unfortunately, I don't think my vote is going to make any difference today. See, Domitius has been going around town, shoring up votes for Maliolis with lies, bribery and intimidation. The man's a savage, but he's a gladiator, so people fear and respect him more than they should. Sentius knows about it, of course, but he doesn't have the same rat cunning as Maliolis. This place will be different with that slaves at the helm. But I try not to worry about things I can't change. I appreciate the thought, but you're new here, and I just can't see how you could make an impact in the time between now and the election this afternoon. In any case, if you're interested in the election, go and have a chat with Equitia, the Vestal Priestess. She'll be overseeing proceedings. What business is that of yours? A lot of people have been looking for her. But it's been three weeks, and we've found nothing. What makes you think you can do better? Hmm. I suppose that's true. Centilla was always a kind, well-behaved young woman. I admit. Her disappearance really caught me off guard. If anyone knows something, I'd expect it to be Sentia, Maliolis, Claudia, or Domitius. But none of them will tell me anything. You might fare better, though, I suppose. Fine. All right. Please keep an eye out for anything that might lead us to Centilla.
on your best behavior, I trust. What have you discovered? What? Really? I swear, I searched her room top to bottom and never saw that. I wonder how I could have missed it. Strange, but well done, I suppose. But it's odd. It was only a few months ago that Santilla's friend Yulia let slip she was planning an escape of her own. And yet, Yulia's still here. You should go and speak with her. Find out if she knows anything. She lives in the villa next door. Fear is proof of a degenerate mind. any news about your investigation? Thank you. I'll be waiting here for news. Two talking about. Don't play dumb. I saw you having a shady little chat with old man Sentius up on his balcony. What's he offering you? Money? Favors? What's your vote worth to him? What? You're throwing your lot in with him for free then? That's even worse. Mark my words, Maliolus is going to be magistrate by the end of the day. And if I tell him you've sided with that feeble old has-been, that you've been trying to undermine his hard-won victory, you'll have picked the wrong patron. Got it? Good. Then stay out of it. Nobody likes Cap and Murday foreigners interfering in an election. Ah, uh, Connor. The name's Domitius. You want to get to Maliolus, you go through me. Too bad. He's busy. Unless... No. You don't look like you could afford it. I'm glad you asked. See, he's a busy man, and this is an important day. He'll be inside, practicing his victory speech for tonight. Left me strict instructions he doesn't want to be disturbed. So if you want to see him, I'll need something valuable in return. Dunno. Something good. Bribe? That's such an ugly word. What I'm looking for is more of a... a tribute. To me, your soon-to-be patron. Just make it good. When Maliolus wins the election, yeah? This place will change. You won't even want to leave. You'll see. I think it's gone on long enough, and Maliolus is going to put an end to it once he's elected. We've already lined up the votes he needs to win. Just stay out of our way, and we won't have a problem. Maliolus, of course. If old man Sentius can't even protect his own daughter, how can we trust him to protect us? Listen, I don't abduct women. They come to me, and they keep coming back. If you know what I mean.
She's not here. Had to carry her to Lucretia's clinic this morning. Shrine of Apollo. She was acting sick. Faking it, if you ask me. Typical. Whatever. Just remember, I'll be watching. Hey! You're not thinking about going into the cistern, are you? Good. You'd be eaten alive, little runt like you. Nobody's told you about Hannibal. Ugh. Why do I have to do everything round here? So, there was this guy called Hannibal, right? Funny accent. Used to go down into the cisterns looking for junk he could clean up and sell. One day, a few weeks back, he comes out and tells me the cisterns are haunted. Said he could hear spirits wailing. Of course, nobody believed him, because who trusts a Carthaginian, right? Anyway, a few days later, he goes back in. And hours go by, and he hasn't come back out, yeah? So I go down after him, and it's dark. But in the distance, I can just make out his body sprawled out on the ground. And hunched over him was something that made my blood run cold. No word of a lie. I saw a creature. Like the corpse of a man who'd been flayed. And it was eating Hannibal. What any sane person would have done. I legged it out of there and put a sign at the door to warn the others. Good idea. Ave, and may Vesta watch over you. I'm Equitia. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit? A 
Oh my. I take it people are quite direct where you're from. I suppose it's quite charming in its own way. Usually, however, you wouldn't simply march up to a Vestal Priestess and without due formality or courtesy ask, what is your story? The proper approach would be to arrange an introduction through a mutual acquaintance in high office, by which time you would already know how to address me. And then you would find a way to satisfy your curiosity rather more indirectly. But to be honest, I've often thought what an unnecessarily formal way to communicate that is. So, let's do it your way. You just keep being yourself and ask whatever you like. It'll be a refreshing change. You know, I'm not entirely sure. But what about you? How did you end up here? Karen, you say? And nothing about that name seemed odd to you. Why is that? As you wish, but... Hmm. I wonder if... No. I apologize. I don't mean to be cryptic. It's just that you've got me thinking. Have you spoken with any of the others about how they arrived here too? I really think you should. Go around and ask them what they remember and see if you notice any patterns. Good. Thank you. But please be careful. I just don't want to see what happened to Livia happen to you too. Up until a few weeks ago, she was a perfectly productive member of our little community, darning clothes and cutting hair. She was always so chatty, always seeking out newcomers and asking them where they were from and how they wound up here. And then, about a month ago, she suddenly changed. She withdrew, stopped working and became despondent, started muttering to herself. Galerius and I visited her to see how we could help, but she just looked at us with this haunted stare, called us bloodless shadows, and told us we were ignorant of some pattern. Look, it could be unrelated. Perhaps she simply fell ill. Or, as Galerius suggested, the weight of the Golden Rule was too much for her. But there is a small chance that she learned something, saw a pattern nobody else saw, and that it broke her. I just don't want to see that happen to you. So be careful, will you? Thank you. Now, go and follow the thread of truth through this labyrinth, and come back to me if you discover any patterns. I don't, I'm afraid. It seems to me we're exiled here until the gods judge us, one way or another. I'm quite sure it's the work of the gods, which is strange because they've never been particularly concerned with our misdeeds, as long as we've kept the peace of the gods. We ask for blessings, for good health, bountiful harvest, military victory, and in return, we offer praise, wine, incense, or animals. But here, it seems they require much more of us. I find myself reminded of an especially pertinent tale from our great poet Ovid in his epic Metamorphoses. Would you like to hear it? It is rather long. Wonderful. It goes like this. Baucis and Philemon were an old married couple living a humble life in a small town. One night, the town gets a visit from a couple of vagrants. They go from door to door, asking for a place to stay the night. Of course, being vagrants, they're turned away sharply from house after house, a thousand in all, until finally they come to the little cottage where Baucis and Philemon lived. Now the kind old couple had very little to offer, but nevertheless, they invite these strangers into their house and offer them food, wine, and a place to stay. Immediately, the guests make themselves at home. They begin gulping down the old couple's wine, so much so that Baucis, the old lady, begins to worry they're going to run out. And then she notices something strange. 
her wine pitcher keeps refilling itself, as if by magic, realizing only a select few possess such powers. Says to her husband, Philemon, I think these men are gods in disguise. Immediately, the couple begins apologizing for offering such coarse wine, and the vagrants metamorphosize and reveal themselves to be Jupiter, the king of the gods, and Mercury, the trickster god. They confide they didn't mind the meager offerings. They were just pleased that someone in the town offered them hospitality. Then Jupiter says to them, You have passed our test, but everyone else in this city failed, so we are going to destroy this place and everyone in it, except you, who we will grant a wish. So old Baucis and Philemon escape up into the mountains safely, and they receive their wish, which is for eternity together. Meanwhile, Jupiter carries through with his threat and wipes that city off the map. Some say the moral of that story is that we must all honor the sacred rituals of guest friendship, the reciprocal obligations owed between hosts and guests. But I like to think it's that we should always show compassion for those less fortunate than ourselves. I'm pleased to hear it. It must be completed by dusk, just the same as any other official business. It'll be between Sentius, the incumbent, and Maliolus, the challenger. Why do you ask? All of the male citizens who are willing and able to attend, unless they're running, of course. Hmm, that's just the way it's always been, I'm afraid. It never sat right with me, either. There are some women who can vote, Vestal priestesses like myself, but in this case, given my role overseeing the election, I've decided to abstain. I can't allow the perception that I'm being anything but fair and independent, but if it's any consolation, there are other ways to influence the outcome of an election. By using whatever gifts the gods gave you, Nothing untoward, of course. I'm responsible for announcing it and making sure the procedures are followed. You can, assuming they're eligible and willing to accept the nomination. As I said, I'm planning to hold it before dusk. But I suppose I could hold it sooner, if there's a good reason. As you wish. Certainly. And did you notice anything? A pattern? Oh, well then. Keep asking people how they wound up here. I don't want us to rush to any conclusions yet. Livia's fate weighs heavily on my mind, and dictates we should be sure. Yes, you should ask the others first. Come back to me once you've acquainted yourself with the rest of our neighbors. Rufius, better watch your step. Can't talk long, got to stay sharp, but uh, family's from Seleucia and Tigris, Babylon province. But I've been Roman a long time now. Even joined the legions, the sixth, the one they call Ironclads. Same way as everyone else. Because we're all in grave danger. Is it not obvious? Mm. Magistrate made me toss it in the chasm. Stupid. Going to have to improvise now. If 
you were dealing with what I am, you wouldn't be either. None of your business. In Troy to Ipsum come in Shula. If we have to. If I did, do you think we'd be having this conversation? I'll tell you this much. I hate the fact that my survival depends on the common sense of other people. I mean, all these people just bumble along like nothing's wrong. Well, we're one bad decision away from being wiped out. Like the last lot of people who lived here. Seems like I'm the only one ready for what's coming. Whatever that is. And when it hits, it's everyone for themselves. You've been warned. I don't know. But did you ever get the feeling some of these statues are watching us when we're not looking? Like they're waiting for something. I don't like it. Of course I am. Meliolus. Not sure I trust Sentius. Couldn't even protect his daughter in a city without sin. How's he going to protect us? No. Whatever. Give me a moment. Sorry I'm such a mess. I just lost a patient and a dear friend. Yulia, she was a good woman. She was poisoned. She came in here frothing at the mouth. Normally I'd treat her with resin of sylphium, a rare plant which is perfect for this sort of thing. And I knew Dacius had some at his market stall, right around the corner. So I ran over there, but he just looks at me with this evil smile and says, That'll be a thousand denarii. There was no way I could afford that, and he knew it. Then that toad shrugs and says, Supply and demand. I guess you don't value your friend's life that highly. Anywhere else, I'd just pay a thug to steal it from his stall. But there's no way I can do that down here with the golden rule. So all I could do is come back here and just watch her die. I kept on apologizing. And now I'll never know who poisoned her, or how they managed to do it without breaking the golden rule, or why she cursed that snake's cruel black eyes with her dying breath. Well, unless you have the power to bring someone back from the dead, there's really just one thing you can do. Get me that sylphium resin. I'm going to have another patient in here soon. Could be in the next day or in the next hour. And I will not allow this to happen again. I don't care how you get it, but you have to make it happen. Because if I lose another patient this way, I swear to the gods below, 
Not even the golden rule will stop me from marching up to that genetric Kamfututo and scratching his eyes out. Well, come back if you get sick or injured. Day or night, I'll do what I can. May Apollo keep you safe. Ah, a fellow traveler from a faraway land. Greetings, I'm Georgius. It gladdens me to see another foreigner in our midst. We must stick together, you and I. And I must say, my sartorial friend, your clothing is most extraordinary. Leather boots in place of sandals, trousers with precise stitching, and such a curious design. I have traveled distant trade routes from the markets of Damascus to the farms of India, and never have I seen anyone dressed quite like you. Tell me, I must know. From which exotic part of the world do you hail? Then you are an explorer, like me! Wonderful! You must have many stories to share. I cannot wait to hear them. We will have much time here to get to know one another. But for now, do you require assistance? I know you do not require clothing, so information perhaps? My story? How kind of you to ask. I am a tailor and I run the humble shop in the forum. A good question. A very good question indeed. And I would be happy to tell you if only I could remember it clearly myself. Fortune smile on you, brother. Hmm. I remember I had just been to Rome to sell an extraordinary selection of wares. And, droning in coin, I decided to celebrate my success. I rented a prestigious villa by the Tiber, invited over a few select friends, and we began making our way through some of the most exquisite wine money could buy. Quite a lot of it, in fact. Now, I have had visions and awoken in strange places before. I have even found myself naked in the desert sands more than once, but none of that compares to this. This time, I remember people screaming, then falling into a void as empty as time before creation, gasping for air, and then nothing. When I regained my faculties, I was lying naked by the banks of the Tiber, gods know how many miles from my villa. Indeed, I'm lucky I was carrying a little extra weight. <laughs> I believe it kept me afloat. In any case, it seems I'd been rescued and resuscitated by a benevolent stranger. I went to find firewood for his campfire, stumbled across a cave, and discovered that trapdoor temple. And here I am. You mean to say, with all the turmoil and terror of the Golden Rule, and so few customers, why bother setting shop at all? I'll tell you, it is precisely because of the Golden Rule that I wish to remind my friends of the importance of looking one's best. I say, the more of our customs we preserve down here, the more we can preserve a semblance of normality, the better our chances of keeping our heads. Don't you agree? Anything you like. Shh! Not so loud! What are you playing at? Have you not been told about the last attempt? Oh, then I suppose this duty falls to me. Ah, it is a long story. Of course, the first question any of us asks when we first arrive is, 
How do I escape? It is only natural after all. And scaling the chasm wall is out of the question, for it is simply too steep and too far. But as they say, if the wind fails, use the oars. And here the second option is to leave the way we came in, through the shaft above the bathhouse. See, the shaft is quite high, but if one gathered up enough wood, one could make a series of ladders and climb one's way out. They have! I am getting to that. There was an attempt made by resourceful fellows who lived here some years ago. They even decided to keep records of their escape attempt for posterity. Unfortunately, as soon as they began to carry the first ladder down the hallway, they heard a godlike voice shake the entire city. And that, tragically, is where their tale ends. So it seems that to merely attempt escape is to invite the wrath of whichever god oversees this place. And so I say, it is best to not even discuss it aloud. Ah, yes. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. As a Greek, this is nothing new to me. It is how our gods operate. That, my friend, is quite the dilemma. But after some reflection, I'm leaning toward voting for Maleolus. I do not enjoy the thought of another visit from Domitius if I voted the wrong way. Nothing comes to my mind, my friend. I hope that our paths cross again soon, my friend.